Chapter 11 With high heels adorning her feet, she stomped and said, Make him call me Mommy, then throw him out. Did you hear what Miss Jade said, you little bastard? Let her hear you call her Mommy, or else. Harry roared. As soon as he said that, more than twenty burly men behind him reached to their lower back and pulled out their expandable batons. Or else, don't blame me for not sparing you any courtesy. I'm giving you a way out. Be a good boy and call her Mommy, Harry said with a smirk and continued. Then, if you kneel on the ground for her and admit your mistake, you'll be allowed to leave here safe and sound. Otherwise, I'll send you out on a stretcher. Jade could not resist laughing. She took two steps forward in her high heels and fished out her cell phone from her bag. If Daryl finally caved in and called her mommy, she would record it and send it to Lily. What if I don't? Daryl was amused and began looking at Jade up and down. Jade frowned upon seeing Daryl's resistance. Mr. Crocker, hit him and make him kneel. My pleasure. Harry stretched out both arms. One hand grabbed Daryl by the collar, while the other delivered a fierce punch. Stop right there, you bastard! A roar echoed, and the door was kicked open by four or five individuals. Everyone was stunned after seeing the group of people. Samson Facey, the boss of Moonlit River. Wayne Woodall, the boss of the Oriental Pearl Hotel. Felix Blakely, the owner of Black Tiger Real Estate. Emily Dickinson, the owner of Poesia Eleganza. Siegfried Gates, the general manager of Southeast Petroleum, Donghai City. Any one of them was worth at least billions, and the person who spoke earlier was none other than Samson. A smile appeared on Daryl's face when he saw them. They were his old friends, who used to be poor but had received favors from him in the past. They seem to have ended up rather successful in the business world. You bastard! Samson nearly died of fright. How dare that bastard lay a hand on the second young master! He rushed over and slapped Harry's face. Slap! Samson practically used up all of his strength in that slap, and Harry covered his cheeks as it began to swell. Godfather! Harry yelled and was on the brink of tears. Godfather, this peasant worker is causing trouble. How dare he sit in room 888? Slap! Samson slapped him again and roared, What about that peasant worker? Did he provoke you? You're already looking down on people after enjoying a little luxury. What did I teach you? Godfather! Harry yelled disgruntledly and his eyes were red. But, Godfather, this kid, he's an outsider. Why would you hit me for his sake? Samson trembled in rage before pointing at Daryl, saying, Outsider, don't you fucking know that I won't be where I am today without this person? He's the Darby family's second young master. You'll have to work for ten years to get a day's worth of his pocket money. What? The entire room immediately fell silent. Harry was stupefied. He often heard tales of his godfather working for the Darby family before establishing Moonlit River. His godfather was lucky to have been appreciated by the second young master. Never in Harry's wildest dreams would he expect the poor young man to be the Darby family's second young master. Jade was flabbergasted too. At that moment, she felt her legs turn limp as her delicate body unconsciously took two steps back. She could see the immense respect these business tycoons had when standing in front of Daryl. How was that possible? He was just a live-in son-in-law. That loser was doing housework whenever she went to Lily's house. Even her laundry, which she was usually disinclined to do, was sent to Lily's house and given to that loser to wash. But, but, he turned out to be the Darby's family's second young master? Mr. Daryl, Mr. Daryl, I made a mistake. I was wrong. Harry was close to crying. 
he bowed to Daryl and apologized profusely. Mr. Daryl, blame this woman! Harry bellowed all of a sudden before pointing at Jade. It's all because of you! It's because of you that I offended Mr. Daryl! Leave right now! Jade trembled. But we haven't signed the contract yet. Jade worked in a renovation company, and it just so happened that Moonlit River required some renovations. It was a big project that would rake in a commission of at least one million if the contract was successfully signed. As a result, Jade did not bring up the deal with the company and planned to accept it in her personal capacity. A commission of one million was considered the minimum, and she might even stand to earn two million. This was not the kind of business she could just turn her back on. One to two million was at stake. Sign my foot! Harry's eyes were red. He pointed at Jade and cursed loudly. If it weren't for you, I would have never offended Mr. Darby. Fuck the contract! I'll even make sure to head to your company and tell your boss about all your business dealings behind their backs. Your company forbids you to solicit projects privately, so sit back and wait for a lawsuit. Jade's beautiful face completely drained of color. She bit her lip tightly. If the company knew about her private solicitations and brought her to court, she would be lucky if she only had to pay compensation there was a definite possibility that she might end up going to jail. Mr. Daryl. At that moment, Jade bit her lip and walked to Daryl. She tugged his arm and shook it coyly. Mr. Daryl, I was wrong. Her voice was so soft that it was impossible to hear if one did not pay attention. She never dreamed that she would one day apologize to this good-for-nothing. It hardly occurred to her that she would bow and scrape to this hopeless loser. Daryl remained expressionless and smiled looking at her. Didn't you just say that you wanted me to kneel and call you mommy? I was wrong. I know that I did wrong. Jade bit her lips so tightly that it almost bled. I'll kneel. Jade clasped her hands together tightly. Her dignity and self-esteem meant nothing at that moment. She bent her knees slightly and proceeded to kneel in front of Daryl. Mr. Daryl, I'm begging you, please forgive me. Jade grabbed Daryl's trousers and said softly, Mr. Daryl, if my company knows about my private business dealings, the consequences are really serious. I'm begging you, please spare me, for Lily's sake. Sure, Daryl responded curtly. But what are you supposed to address me as? As Daryl said that, he placed his hand to his ear and gazed down at Jade. A chill came up her spine as she knelt there. How could she not know what Daryl meant? d daddy Jade bit her lip tightly and whispered. Her face had already turned red. Daryl was the person she looked down on the most. The mere sight of him would leave her feeling sick. At that point, however, she had renounced virtually all of her dignity in front of Daryl. You'll address me like that in the future, understood? Daryl asked with a smirk. Jade nodded repeatedly. Also, I don't want Lily to know my identity. Daryl took out a cigarette, lit it, and inhaled deeply. You know what to do, don't you? Yes, yes, Jade answered and glanced at Daryl. Don't worry, Daddy. I won't say a single word about what happened today. Daryl nodded in satisfaction and waved his hand, indicating that she could leave. Second young master, I failed to discipline my godchild. Samson bowed to Daryl after everyone left. At the same time, Wayne, Felix, Emily, and Siegfried also stepped forward and bowed. Second young master, we were nothing all those years ago. Emily took a step forward. If it weren't for you, we wouldn't be where we are today. Knowing that you are here today, we got you a gift. She took out a box while speaking. Emily's Poija Eleganza specialized in cosmetics, and the Poija Eleganza brand had succeeded in making a name for itself. Three years ago, she was just a promoter giving out flyers on the street. One time, she scratched Daryl's car by accident, 
but instead of leaving, she waited an entire night for Daryl to return. On that occasion, Daryl felt that she was a person of good character and gave her 300,000 bucks to start a business. Time passed in the blink of an eye, and it was already five years since the incident. Emily opened the box, the inside of which contained a scroll. As soon as she unfurled it, Daryl inhaled sharply. It was the work of calligraphy that looked rather old. The inscription wrote, Wang Shi Zhi. Was that, was that Wang Shi Zhi's Ping On Tai? The scroll made the news after being auctioned off by a mysterious Chinese rich man. We know that second young master is fond of antiques, painting, and calligraphy, so we pooled our money and bought this from a collector. Felix chuckled as he explained. It was very eye-catching to see his two rows of pearly teeth contrasting with his very tan skin. Second young master, your birthday is in three days, right? This is our birthday present to you. Birthday? Daryl facepalmed. He had forgotten it completely. His birthday was on the same day as Grandmother Linden, which was happening in three days. No one remembered his birthday in previous years. Everyone celebrated Grandmother Linden's birthday, and Daryl merely benefited from sharing the same birthday as her. It came as a surprise that there were still people who remembered his birthday. In one of Donghai City's cafes, Ashton sat face to face with Lily. He had yet to reveal his bankruptcy to Lily. I've decided, Lily Bud. I'll bring up the marriage proposal to the Linden family on Grandmother Linden's birthday. Ashton looked at Lily affectionately. Chapter 12 You... Lily frowned when Ashton talked about the marriage proposal. Forget it. I'm not divorced yet. Although Daryl was a loser, he had worked hard in the past few years and fulfilled his housework duties. He received a telling off every time he failed to do a good job, yet he never complained. Even a dog would have feelings, let alone a human. Daryl had recently loaned them five million and relieved the company of its woes. Aside from that, Daryl had to take out all the money he had saved over the years to avoid embarrassment when William suggested going Dutch in Oriental Pearl Hotel. Ashton looked at her affectionately. Lilybud, am I inferior to Daryl in any way? He's a loser. Don't you worry. I'll prepare a big gift for Grandma's birthday and wish her a happy birthday. She'll be delighted with the gift. I'll propose marriage when the time comes, and I'm sure that Grandma would not refuse. Lily casually sipped her coffee. The Linden family's rules were very strict, and Grandmother Linden had the final say. If she took a liking to Ashton, Lily might be instructed to divorce Daryl. Lily genuinely regarded Daryl as a loser, but she was not completely apathetic toward him. After all, they had been married for three years, and she did not dare to say that she had no feelings for him. Let me ask you something, Lily suddenly said. What is it? Ask away, Lilybud. That pair of the worship of crystal, you didn't give me the real one, did you? Lily could not help but ask. Lilybud, I get angry when you mention that. Ashton sighed, and a fierce look flashed in his eyes. The shoes I gave you are imitations, but they are still worth 300,000 bucks. Your loser husband threw them. When I went home and saw those shoes, I realized that he had destroyed them. Lily listened to Ashton's grumbles and bit her lip tightly. I'm talking about the genuine pair of the worship of Crystal. Weren't you the one who gave them to me? Lily asked softly. What? Ashton was taken aback. His first instinct was to look below. Sure enough, Lily was wearing a pair of noble and elegant high heels. It was none other than the worship of Crystal. His mouth opened wide after glancing at those heels. That pair of the worship of Crystal was on a whole other level compared to the high-grade imitation worth 300000 Ashton might be a man, but he knew that those shoes were genuine. They looked particularly elegant and complimented a noble look on any woman who wore them. Gulp. Ashton gulped fiercely. 
30 million. A pair of genuine The Worship of Crystal cost 30 million. That pair was special in that I was limited to 99 pairs worldwide. Those without connections were unable to purchase them. Was this pair a gift from you? Lily pressed on. She really could not think of anyone else who would give her something so expensive. Indeed, many people wanted to pursue her, but deep down, Lily knew that most of her suitors were merely rich kids. They might be wealthy, but they could not spend $30 million just for a gift. What about Ashton? Despite being in dire straits after the Darby family cut off their funding, he still had an eye for detail. If his guesses were correct, then someone else had given those shoes to Lily, though she had absolutely no idea who the giver was. <laughs> Did people like that still exist? Anonymous gift givers. <laughs> well, if you don't want to take credit for it, then I'd be happy to. Ashton was overjoyed. He smiled cheekily in feigned coyness. You got me, Lily Bud. I'll tell you the truth, then. I gave it to you. Ah, uh, really? Lily looked at him puzzlingly. Why didn't you admit it when I asked you before? Ashton scratched his head. It's not that I didn't want to admit it, Lily Bud. It's just I'm worried you'll scold me. Why would I scold you? Lily asked. Ashton gazed lovingly at Lily. Because I know in my heart that you love these shoes, and you wanted them for a very long time. I wanted to buy them for you, Lily Bud, but as you may know, our company is only 30 million. That's why I bought you a pair of high-quality copies. Still, when I gave them to you, I had a feeling that you didn't like them that much. He took out his cell phone, tapped the screen a few times, then said, So, I decided to sell the company and bought you this pair. I was worried you'll scold me for being stupid. Lilybud, you know that you're the most important person in my heart. I'm not stupid. I just love you too much. I'll always find a way to get you the stuff you like because I love you. Ashton handed over his phone as he explained. A photo was on display, and it was that of Ashton's contract to leave the company. Ashton chuckled in his heart. While the contract was real, the reason he signed it was because the Darby family drove him away and no longer allowed him to remain in the company. Ashton was still in the dark over who he offended and why it caused the Darby family to chase him out all of a sudden. On the other hand, Lily knew nothing about that. She truly believed that Ashton had sold off the company and bought her those shoes. Although her affections for Ashton were not of the romantic kind, she felt slightly emotional at that moment and looked right at him. You... Lily's lips nearly bled due to her biting it. Why are you so stupid? I'm not stupid. Ashton seized the chance and reached out to hold Lily's beautiful hand. Lily, bud, I'm willing to do anything for you. Lily trembled. Even though she found it heartwarming, she still retracted her hand and looked at Ashen with mixed feelings. In the end, she picked up her bag and left. Ashton ogled her slender, curvy figure from behind. I'm going to get this woman. Ashton had a little smile, as if he could already imagine Lily's captivating body. Moonlit River Bar it was ages since Daryl last got drunk, and he had lost all self-control today. You can still tolerate a fair bit of alcohol, second young master, Samson raised his glass and said. From now on, don't ever call me second young master again. Daryl looked around and downed his glass. I'm not keen on being addressed like that. Three years ago, his sister-in-law led the charge to kick Daryl out of the family. From that point onward, he was especially averse to the title of second young master. The thought of what happened back then prompted Daryl to clench his fists. Back then, he had used eight million to buy Southeast Petroleum's shares, but no one ever believed that he could make money out of it. His sister-in-law alleged that it was an attempt to hollow out the clan funds, and under her instigation, the family kicked Daryl out of the clan. However, the eight million from that time was his own pocket money, which he saved himself and formed his private funds. 
Daryl was well aware that his sister-in-law did that for a reason. There were two candidates for the Darby family's future patriarch. The first in line was Florian, Daryl's elder brother. The second was none other than Daryl. His sister-in-law wanted to get rid of him so there would be no one else vying with Florian for the patriarch's position. Then is it okay if we call you Mr. Darby from now on? Wayne said, snapping Daryl back to the present. Daryl nodded. His mood had soured after reflecting on the past. Then he saw Emily approaching from one side. She said softly, Mr. Darby, there's something I want to tell you. What is it? Daryl finished the drink in his hand and looked at her. He had to admit that Emily looked much more charming than compared to when he first met her. In the present, her business had taken off and she had built her brand of cosmetics, making her look more alluring than before. It's about your sister-in-law, Emily said in his ear. Let's hear it. Emily nodded and slowly began. Just last year, your sister-in-law contacted someone to get in touch with me. She wanted to buy a piece of limited edition cosmetics. After I bought it for her and chatted with her, I found out by accident that she's very ambitious. Daryl had a faint smile. He had long noticed how ruthlessly ambitious his sister-in-law was. Why else would she have chased him away if not for that characteristic of hers? In the bustling area of Donghai City, Lily, who had just parted ways with Ashton, was walking side by side with Phoebe. Why do you look so distracted, Lily? Phoebe asked as they walked out of a store. Lily shook her head. It's nothing. At that point, her mind was filled only with thoughts of Ashton. It was hard to imagine that the man had sold his company just to buy her a pair of heels. By the way, Lily, did you hear about the cosmetics brand that's all the rage recently? Phoebe asked excitedly. The absent-minded Lily finally showed some interest. It's the Poisia Eleganza's crown line? Yes, yes, yes! The two of them giggled at the same time. There was a myriad of topics that women could talk about, but the ones that interested them the most were stuff like cosmetics and clothes. One particular brand of cosmetics was in the spotlight recently, and that brand was Poisia Eleganza. Valentine's Day was coming soon, and Poisia Eleganza had launched another series called The Crown Line. It was limited to 520 sets worldwide. Each set cost 520,000 bucks and was considered to be royalty among the cosmetics brands. Every woman desired it. Although 520,000 bucks were not too expensive a sum, plenty of rich people scrambled to get their hands on it, and those without any connections were downright unable to buy them.